All right, we're recording. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, I'd like to call the Town Services and Outreach Committee of the Amherst Town Council to order on September 12, 2024, at three minutes after 10 in the morning. This is meeting posted for 10. We have a quorum of the committee present. And uh, this meeting is being conducted via remote means. Uh, members of the public uh, who wish to access the meeting. I uh, can do so via Zoom, and actually all of us are participating via Zoom. Uh, this uh, meeting is being conducted uh, under current open meeting law provisions in Commonwealth. And uh, I'm going to go through and just make sure that all members of the committee can hear and uh, uh, they, they can hear me and we can hear them. So, uh, Councilor Ryan. I'm here. I can hear you. Uh, Jennifer Taub. Uh, I'm here. Council Lord. Here, I can hear you. Okay, so, uh, and we know that uh, uh, Bob Hegner is not going to be available today and is therefore not a part of the meeting. And uh, so, with that said, I think that we can... Uh, move uh, along to um, see if there's anybody in the audience uh, who would like to make public comment. So if there are any requests for public comment, please raise your hand. Seeing no requests for public comment, then I think we can go on to um, item three and so, Paul, welcome back. Thank you. Hope you had a good break. Yes. And uh, we have uh, town uh, manager appointments that you wanted to, uh, are going to present to us, I believe, this morning for, uh, if I'm correct, in my recollection, it's Board of Health and uh, Community uh, Preservation Act Committee. So. Sure. Uh, so the first, first is for the Board of Health. This is a vacancy in the Board of Health that we're seeking to fill. And the the appointment is for Daya Mena. Uh, Daya um, uh, was a, is a graduate of Hampshire College, is now a PhD student in neuroscience and behavior at university and has done research at the Broad Institute and MIT at, in Harvard. Um, Interest at Hampshire, she also served. They also served on the um, uh, board of trustees, um, and we were intrigued by Daya's uh, background and experience, mostly because they bring a different um, perspective to the um, committee that broadens the um, uh, the knowledge base. Because they're a real researcher in behavioral health and mental health issues, which is something the Board of Health is very concerned about, but doesn't have any expertise at this point in time. And uh, the values that they brought to the conversation were very um, in line with where the Board of Health wants to go in terms of socioeconomic diversity and um, issues of LGBTQ plus um, community. So uh, that's the appointment for the Board of Health. Hey, um, I think I'm going to ask just one question that I've been thinking about over the um, as you've been uh, bringing more students to us. Um, are you making inquiry as to how long people who are applying and students will be available to participate on the board? And is that being considered by the um, your committee as you look at these? Yes, and in fact, that's been more of a or an issue with undergraduates. We do look at when they're when they're likely to graduate, um, and students are pretty honest that they don't they are unlikely to continue. But I think we last time we did one for the cultural council who was going to be graduating, but the perspective that that person brought was really unique and um, thought that a, a one year service on the committee was was worthwhile. Um, the two that we had approved. Approve, approve, um, approve recently um, are both graduate students who are going to be here for multiple years. And and I, one of the th reasons I think about this is that um, those voices need to be heard by the committees as well. So even if it's just for a short time, 
there's going to be another grad. They're always graduate students. They're always students, undergraduate students. And we need to hear their voices, even if the individual is only here for a short period of time. And this came home to me when I appointed someone um, to the Recreation Commission. She was, she knew she was only going to be here. She, she was a partner of a, of a graduate fellow at UMass, and she had a new baby, and she was frustrated by her ability to get service, get um, swim lessons at recreation. And what she said, which was really informative to me, she says, I'm only going to be here two years, but when I move out, someone else is going to move in who's going to have a little baby who's going to need the same services, and we need to hear that perspective. And so I think hearing the perspective, even if it is for two or three or four years, is a really important thing for the, for the town to listen to. Okay, thank you. Councillor Ryan? Uh, just a quick question, Paul. Does this uh, appointment then bring the Board of Health to the full five members? Um, it does. It does. Thank you. Jennifer? Um, yeah, so I just, this isn't particular to any candidates, but I just have a little concern about the process because it's feeling, you know, this is my first um year on TSO and that we really can't do anything then I guess rubber stamp the recommendations it would be helpful can we know who else applied just to, to have that information I know that you can't share the calves um, but if we could know who else applied at least we'd have some context Athena's hand just went up <laughs> Athena you want to respond um, TSO had asked about that over the years. <laughs> oh, um, sorry, something just popped up and I, are you seeing my- Yes, I'm seeing George Ryan. George Ryan oh. was sharing a whiteboard. Oh, George, George, you're- I'm Sorry, I was trying, my computer is now um, forcing me to go through conniptions just to raise my hand. And there are like five options. And I apparently, new whiteboard is right under raise hand. <laughs> so, I'm trying to, I'm going to close the whiteboard. I apologize to you all and I will shut up. <laughs> uh, so TSO had, asked, sorry, TSO had asked about this before and um, for some time, Paul had been reporting on the number of applicants. Mm -hmm. So kind of giving information about the applicants, but not sharing CAFs. And honestly, the CAFs don't have a heck of a lot of information about the applicants. Anyhow, it's really just kind of name and address. So, um, so we could ask Paul to do that. Yeah, we had multiple applicants for this for these slots. I can say that, um, and and I think the imp important point here is that it, it is the manager's appointment. It's not the council's appointment. If it were the council appointment, you would see all the CAFs and all the applicants. But that's not what the that's not how the charter is structured. So um, the choice for the council is to sort of like the Supreme Court. You get to say yes or no to whoever presented to the council, you get, you, you can say, no, we want to see somebody else. And that's, that's totally within the realm of uh, authority of the council. Okay. I just have one more request <laughs> mm -hmm. is um, people. Uh, so the applicants, are they notified before it becomes public that they have not been selected? The goal is to do that. And th th that did not happen in this case, because I had gone on vacation. Yeah. So but I have notified them since then. So if going forward, I guess they could know before. I tried yeah. to do that. Yeah, okay. we tried to do that. Yeah. Okay. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. Do you have a motion? Uh, I actually want to say something first. Uh, this uh, discussion has happened in previous uh, TSO iterations, and um, I have also had the experience through GOL. I think that we are part of a process, and part of what we do is simply to ensure that that, that the town manager follows that process. Um, and we also have an opportunity to ask questions and we learn things. So uh, we're not a rubber stamp, but um, as Paul pointed out, these are his appointments and ultimately the council has a say if they wish to exercise it. Um, I think our job is, is kind of what we did today. Um, just Paul describes the process in great detail. I think he does an excellent job in, in bringing a number of other people into it. It's not just something he does by himself. Um, and uh, it's there in black and white. Um, I will often have opportunities to ask questions as, as others have had this morning, um, but I don't think it's our job to second guess um, his appointments. Um, and so I, I'm perfectly happy with the way this process works. I don't believe that we're supposed to be looking over his shoulder as he does it. 
Um, I think our job is mainly to make sure that the process is followed and there are certain questions we can ask and we do. Um, so that's just something I want to throw in there. From my experience, I've been very pleased by the way the town manager handles this. And um, I say that not to flatter him, but just as I think a statement of fact. Um, and I'm ready to make a motion if uh, the chair is ready for a motion. Yes, go ahead. And if I can read my screen, um, I would like to, I move to, uh, hang on here, my screen. It's not my day for uh, computers. Can I help, George? Uh, I I want to do oh, this. You got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. One of the few things I think I can actually do. Um, I move uh, to recommend that uh, the town manager appointment of Daya Mena to the uh, Board of Health for a two-year term to expire uh, June 30, 2026. I move to recommend uh, that the council approve the town manager's appointment. Did I mangle that? I think that's uh, and, uh, is there a second? That's what I'm waiting for. I will second it to keep this moving. Uh, so we can go ahead and uh, proceed to a vote. Uh, and uh, we'll start with Councilor Ryan. Aye. And uh, Councilor Lord. Aye. Uh, Jennifer. Yes. And I'm a yes, so that is four zero. So, Paul, back to you. Thank on you. The... So, the next set of appointments is for the Community Preservation Act Committee, and these are the designees from the committees. So, every committee, there are certain seats reserved for committee members. And so, the Conservation Commission had recommended Jason Dorney, the Housing Authority had recommended the reappointment of David Williams, and the Recreation Commission had recommended Matt Kane. Um, at the time I wrote this memo, the planning board hadn't made a recommendation yet, so that will come to you later. But those are the three recommendations from those committees, and they do that annually. Councilor Ryan? I'm prepared to make a motion. Yeah, um, I'll just say um, this goes back to my select board days when the select board was uh, making these uh, appointments. We always assumed that uh, the way it's structured for the Community Preservation Act Committee, that it is the role of the committee to make the recommendation. And we never uh, questioned their judgment because the process had been for the for somebody to get on the committee they had gone through the process already once. So we assumed that they're qualified and it's the choice of the committee and I'm assuming that that's still how it's being handled. Uh, Councilor Ryan, go ahead. So I move that TSO recommended to the town council the approval of the following appointments of the town manager to the Community Preservation Act Committee. Um, Jason Dorney, uh, David Williams and Matt Kane, all for terms to end June 30, to expire June 30, 2025. Um, I'll second. Motion has been made and seconded, and uh, there's no further discussion. Then I'll start with the vote with Councilor Ryan. Aye. And uh, Councilor Lord. Aye. Uh, Jennifer. Yes. And um, yes, so that uh, is again for to zero, one member absent, which is the same vote as in the prior. Thank so you. So that takes care of those issues. Is there anything you have no others, Paul? So, no, thank you. Um, which then takes us to um, item four on the agenda, which is uh, the waste hauler program bylaw uh, amendments is the way that it is written. <clears throat> and uh, Lynn is joining us. And I wanted to uh, start by um, uh, it's just seeing if anybody has any comments about uh, the meeting, council meeting on Monday. I thought that uh, it was an excellent uh, discussion. And I wanted to. Um, thank George for his 
hard work on uh, putting together and doing the presentation at the beginning. And um, I think that all, you know, we were a great team and, um, you know, clearly we provided uh, the information that the council is looking for because uh, there was very little asked in information that we hadn't already provided. And uh, what happened on the motion itself, um, I actually feel very good about the motion and I'm gonna write a thank you note to um, uh, our counselor, uh, Mandy Haneke, who had uh, put in the final version of the motion as was passed. I had thought about doing something similar after a conversation that I have had with Mandy. I did not feel comfortable, however, um, proposing such a motion because we had had a motion that had been voted by the committee. Uh, and so I felt we needed to start with that. So that was, uh, I guess, my introduction, your comment. I don't know if anybody else has anything that they want to say at this point about the meeting on uh, the council meeting. Uh, Councilor Ryan. I think wordsmithing on the fly in a council meeting is terrifying and uh, highly unrecommended. Um, and I thought in spite of that, I thought uh, overall the council as a whole um, performed admirably uh, doing what we did. I think that also it means our real work is just beginning. Um, so it was, a, I think it was well done and it was a good accomplishment, but now the real work for this committee, I think is beginning. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna proceed to the second point um, and just say, uh, Paula, we were really sorry that you weren't there. The, um, there were questions that were asked uh, yeah, um, that it would have, uh, and Guilford came in and made a uh, statement about uh, the amount of money that would be required to hire a consultant, which is, of course, you don't know until you engage in a process to actually take that on. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I assume that you're aware of what was reported and that we proceeded just on that basis, but there was nothing uh, binding out of that, of course. Uh, Jennifer? Yes, I just want to recognize uh, Guilford was extremely helpful during the meeting and we didn't get to this till late. So at least I, I really appreciated his, his being there. Um, and the other thing, we, this may be, jumping ahead, but when he did share a, a ballpark of what the cost might be, since there are so many, we can get contracts, we can get RFPs and certainly contracts from other municipalities in the state that, you know, I'd like to have a conversation about how many hours really will be required if we're talking about the consultant just, you know, working on drafting the RFP and then would the, that person also be evaluate looking at the responses, but you know of how many hours, how can we can we really pare it down to the hours that we you know so there's not sticker shock when we go back to the council. Um, I mean, I've yeah. heard some people say we well yeah that that it because we have so much information we can provide to the consultant how many hours will really be required for that person to draft the RFP. Um. I was going to add a little bit of information, but that's a really important point. And the reason I'm going to add the information is that um, uh, I think that it makes for just a more complete discussion. And it is going to get into then when we get to the uh, talking about the timeline, uh, how all of this works together. Uh, I did some research um, on over the weekend and on Monday on several different points that were related to this and reported informally, but it did not get into council discussion. 
One is that I started looking for bylaws or ordinances in other cities and towns. And I actually was finding that um, most, as a matter of fact, I could not find any in the towns that I looked at or cities that I looked at, that nobody has a, um, a specific bylaw establishing the service that is in the only thing that I can come to is that the service is just assumed to be a service that the town provides. Like you don't have a bylaw establishing a police department. You just know you have a police department. And uh, I think that uh, uh, we have to actually get into this question as to whether we're talking about um, a bylaw or we're really, really just talking about the specifics of the program, and which is, I think, the and uh, uh, Lynn has uh, suggested other language than a bylaw for what the goals are for trying to look for criteria that go into it. RFP. The other thing that I spent a lot of time on is that those of us who were at the MMA conference heard a presentation uh, that included um, discussion of Longmeadow. Um, and uh, Mark Gold from the Longmeadow Select Board was uh, the one who was the, um, presenting on that portion of the program. And he was the one who had a fairly substantial discussion about how they proceed through the RFP process. So um, mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time looking at Longmeadow and how they do their program. I also like Longmeadow's program and like looking at their website. And um, I, uh, uh, because uh, what they have done and how they have structured and been able to work with their vendor to do pays you throw was really an uh, uh, I find to be very impressive. Um, their current um, RFP was is actually in process now, as far as I can tell. It was issued on May one of twenty twenty four. There, um, as he said, uh, Mark said at the. Uh, uh, conference, they do it every five years and they enter into five-year contracts. There are provisions in the contract in some sections where um, cost of doing business gives um, uh, some leeway for increases uh, and uh, as a result, but I, I, when I looked at the Longmeadow budget, uh, the increase was about $50,000 between FY24 and FY25. The, uh, the the RFP that was issued on May 1st of this year is 79 pages long. And um, it is extremely comprehensive. It uh, provides eight options for bidders to bid on and bidders can uh, and companies can bid on providing sections of the service, and they don't have to provide the entire service, um, which actually came up a little bit in the council meeting on the question of uh, composting. And uh, I uh, there was an option eight in uh, of the eight options this year which is food waste proposal. And uh, it says, I don't know the exact language in front of me, but I'm not looking at it, that Longmeadow has not had compost collection, but they are thinking about um, that option. And therefore they were inviting um, people to bid on providing that service um, as option eight. Um, so I found it very educational to see how it's structured. And if anybody um, is interested in looking at the 79 page document, I can be glad to forward it to you. I have it in PDF. Uh, 
but I'm not recommending that you sit there and read the entire thing line from line, but it does give you a sense of what we're talking about to having looked at it. So um, the other thing that I did in looking at this, and then I'll stop on this, I hope I'm not boring you with this piece, uh, that uh, I, I did look at their budget and I did look at the number of households that they had. I did a calculation of, uh, and I don't know if this is an accurate methodology or not, the amount that their budget sets aside for um, the um, whole recycling and um, trash program and uh, then divided it by the number of households to get a sense of what that number was. And uh, it was it was interesting that I uh, I had which I was why I asked uh, um, one of our members who uses USA to tell me how much uh, they were paying for USA, so I could compare the two numbers. I don't know that that really is dispositive of anything, but it was um, helpful for me to at least get a sense of that. And I guess the last thing that I um, um, that I was going to report on my research is that they have a recycling commission as a body that is um, it's like any other town committee, but um, it oversees the process because it's really looking at recycling. And when you look at the bylaws, as I say, there's no bylaw establishing the program. They do have a bylaw that's similar to our, and remember they're a town with a town meeting, they're not a council, they're not a city, um, that they do have a bylaw that handles the recycling issues that are by and large covered in our Board of Health regulations. Uh, and uh, I am continuing on with my investigation. And I actually had Mark and had lunch with him once a few years ago at a uh, MMA conference. And I am thinking about trying to put together a list of questions to ask of Mark and give him a call. Um, so that's the report on, on that. And uh, I got several people who indicated that they were interested in seeing the RFP. It is, um, obviously a public document. I can actually put it into the packet for today's meeting if uh, that's something people want me to do. So anyway, uh, Jennifer and then Athena. Um, you might've mentioned this, Andy, but in Longmeadow, they provide this, are they contracting out for the service? Yes. I guess that's why they have an RFP. So they're not they are. They do an RFP. They have always done, and that's uh, how they do it. Their current provider is Casella. Okay. And uh, you know they they have a contract for service. I actually is planning <clears throat> to ask Mark if I could get his get their contract. Okay, so that's interesting though that you mentioned that they don't have a bylaw for trash. No, and I looked at about half a dozen other cities and towns to see if I could find anybody who does, and uh, I didn't find any. Uh, but I did obviously was doing a comprehensive search. I just did a quick. Yeah. Well, thank you for all that research. Wow. Uh, Athena. I was going to ask you for the the bid documents, but I've found them on the Long Meadow site. So I was just letting folks, they were nodding if you, when you said if anybody else would like to read them. So I'll add those to the packet. Okay, thank you. Uh, so with that, um, does anybody else have anything? Because what I would like to do if there's agreement to do this is, uh, ask Lynn to, because she's been giving a lot of thought to this question of outreach and uh, the entire timeline process. And uh, rather than my trying to 
paraphrase what you, you presented. Are you comfortable presenting it to us? Absolutely. Let me also mention that uh, Guilford is in the audience, if you want to bring him in. Yes, please do. Thank you. Um, it, every time I speak about this, I, I want to make sure people understand I'm not opposed to anything that helps our environment. I have recycled personally for over 40 years. Most people didn't even know it existed when I was doing this. So, but this is a big job and it's a big decision for our town. And this, this committee has done an amazing job and some other committees, either of the town or advocacy groups that are not part of the town have worked hard on this. So I'm not in any way dismissing that, but this will cost our town money. We don't know how much. We're getting a sense here and there. It will cost our residents. And some of those residents are presently not paying anything more than $125 to go to the, to the um, transfer station a year. So that was the perspective that I bring to this. So when I put together the revised timeline, which I believe Andy has included in your packet, um, my first thoughts as I looked at everything that had to get done was this is a lot for any one committee to do, and it's a lot for any one town to do in any time period, okay? So I'm wondering if part of what we need to do is think about a consultant who's going to do other pieces besides just write an RFP. The fact that other towns don't have a bylaw doesn't surprise me because, as Andy said, it's just been a department for years for them. Um, I also feel very strongly, I said this at the council meeting, I understand that people, one of the big questions that people have is, what is it going to cost? Will it cost me any less than I'm paying now? I, but I feel regardless of the issue of cost, there are other things that people have on their mind as they look at this. And therefore, I have really encouraged that outreach happen earlier rather than later. And let me just mention, I'm not the only one because District 1 and now District 2 are scheduling district meetings where they're going to have discussions about this during the month of September. And... Yeah, you know, I think that's terrific. I think it's an opportunity. And both of us are also, by the way, having discussions about the uh, another one of the bylaws that is not coming from this committee. Um, so that was one. And the other piece I, I noticed in the timeline, just off, you know, it you didn't include the Board of Health and they need to be included in how you do this because they actually set the regulations um, for this activity. So uh, we don't need to go through my timeline. It's it, it it presents my bias that there are issues around this besides price. And some of those issues, I will just say, are because people feel very passionately that if we do this, we will somehow or another be contributing to reducing, um, you know, our the problems with our environment. And I'm not saying we won't. I'm just saying whenever the town takes on another responsibility, we as a council really need to look at what that's going to cost us and whether we can implement it. And again, under the purview of another committee, we've been looking at rental registration bylaw. We've even adopted it. We don't know whether we're going to be able to have the staff to implement it. So these are this is more the perspective I'm coming. I'm not coming from this perspective because I think people have not done a great job. You have. I'm not coming from this perspective because I have something like, well, I don't think the environment is important. It is incredibly important. I'm coming from the perspective of what do we owe our residents in terms of listening to them and what is it going to really mean for our town to implement this? Thank you. And by the way, I'm coming at this as a, as a district two counselor, not as president of the council. Okay, thank you, Lynn. Um... I guess a couple things to what you said um, that I just want to 
comment on and uh, like to have some discuss hope from some discussion from the committee then one is about price um we keep going back around on the same point that unless we do an RFP, we're not going to have an answer for us. Um, the cost for those of us, and I'm one of them who uses the transfer station and does not use USA waste for um, our household needs. Um, it's a little more than 125 because we also put about $60 into buying bags every year. Uh, and that you know that's how it's structured uh, because that's how pays you throw works. Um, but um, I did ask somebody for uh, who's got USA waste uh, to give me that information, so at least that we have that point of comparison. I did do that rough calculation of taking Long Meadows' total budget and the number of households that they reported. DEP is that they serve in their system and um, you know did a did a division that amount included staff it was not just the, the their budget lists a portion of the DPW um, director a portion of the town engineer and um, several other staff positions portions of them are, are are charged into that budget for uh, what they call the recycling budget, and uh, um, so I was actually actually um, felt comfortable taking that total and dividing it out and seeing how it compares to what people are paying in the two different systems and. It makes me comfortable with uh, where we're at. Um, I can share my arithmetic, but that wasn't the point that I was making. The other thing is, um, I think outreach is really important. And I think that one of the questions that Lynn has been raising with me for some time and what I wanted to get out, uh, get into the discussion today is that I had originally proposed not doing outreach until we got the RFP back and had numbers to share. Um, and uh, uh, and I think that Lynn has put a different perspective on it, that um, the community interest um, is so great that we really need to start that process even before we get to the RFP stage. Um, and uh, I think that needs to be part of the discussion today. Jennifer? Yeah, so I wonder if we would <clears throat> maybe, well, two, we know that two districts are having their meeting. Um, in District 4, we just had our second district meeting a couple of weeks ago, but maybe we could ask counselors to, you know, convene a meeting by maybe the end of November. Um, I can't speak for Pam, but I'm sure we would be willing to have a meeting just dedicated to this. We combined our mailing list, so we have over 500 Resid residents, constituents on our mailing list, and we'd be happy to have a meeting and let people know it's dedicated to a discussion of this item. All the emails that I've received to date from constituents over the last couple of years have been in support of this you know, proposed bylaw, but I'd be happy to have a meeting, a district meeting just devoted to this item. Maybe all counselors could do that or have a district meeting and this be on the agenda if there... Right, I went hit my mute button as well as other items they wanted to include. Sorry, maybe I should have interrupted a quick point. Of order. Sorry, quick point of order. Um, they, they've lost power in parts of the center of town, so George, um, was disconnected. He's going to try and come back. Here he is on the phone, so we'll just confirm that he can hear us, and we can hear him in a moment. And we also lost Guilford because they lost power down at DPW. So, George, can you hear us? Uh, Yes, I can hear you, and I hope okay, you can great. hear me. Yep, we can. Yes, we can. Okay. So, George, what we were talking about when uh, um, went off is uh, uh, after Lynn made a brief presentation, we've been talking about outreach and when we should be doing outreach and uh, 
district meetings as a means of starting the outreach discussion. Mm -hmm. Yes, good. I have a thought on that. If I can, I, I can raise my hand, but um, may I just interject a thought? Yeah, go ahead. Very briefly. Uh, for outreach, at least in the short term, I would suggest that um, the whoever's doing it use the motion language that um, the council has passed and focus the discussion on those elements, the eight elements that are, I think it's eight, that uh, are highlighted there. Um, that would be my initial thought. Um, and also I would em emphasize that there is no program at the moment um, for us to discuss. So uh, I, I kind of feel outreach at this stage is a bit premature. But if people are going to go ahead and do it, and maybe TSO will do it too. Sorry about the background noise. Um, I think we should, uh, you know, use this document that we passed as the focus of our discussions. And I'll shut up. Yes, so Georgia, question that I would have about what you just said is that uh, a lot of our uh, do all of our constituents even know that we've had this discussion? I, it's been in the newspaper. It's been on uh, some of the web. Uh, I know that uh, you know things like the Amherst Current and uh, Indy have reported on it. Uh, but no, I, 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 Andy, I think outreach is fine. I I I I, I don't mean to 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 and and early is is fine. I, I, my only thought is that that the focus of it, if so, we're all singing from the same songbook, should be um, that uh, motion language, and then um, uh, and that's really about as far as we can go at this stage. But yeah, I agree with you. There are a lot of people who haven't heard about this. It doesn't hurt to to spread the word right away. Um, but I just want to emphasize that there is no program that we're going to be talking about because we don't have one. Uh, there's no bylaw that we're talking about because there isn't one. Um, but there is a sort of a broad outline of what we are uh, setting out to accomplish. And as long as people keep to that, um, I think we should be okay. And I've got power back, so I'm hoping that in a few minutes um, I'll be able to see you all and you can see me. But um, for the moment, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to shut up again. You know, power outages, you just don't know how long it'll last. Uh, any other thoughts on the subject? So, uh, we never really formally adopted um, the the outline of um, tasks, the the work plan. I put that together to give us some sense of it. Um, one of the things that I've become somewhat frustrated about is I'm not sure that it's realistic on the dates. I'm not sure that the uh, completion of an RFP process or issuance of an RFP can go as quickly as we can. I think that we will continue to need input from our professional staff, uh, all in Guilford in particular, on those kinds of issues, because I think it is important that we have a process that continues to move forward, but is also realistic. And uh, I can work, uh, I, I can revise the uh, timeline, but I think that we have to recognize that it is always going to be a work in progress. It's always going to be something that we will amend as we need to because we can't at this point be certain of our ability until we get a little bit farther along. I had geared it towards an implementation date of uh, getting a new system in place on July 26th, which if um, we wanted to give a one year uh, between when we accept an RFP and when it's implemented, which came from the RFIs who were indicating that some companies were, were telling us that uh, once they got a contract, it would take a period of time 
for them to um, get the equipment and staff that would be required to serve a community of our size, that that's where that came from. Uh, and those are things that I'm hoping we can continue to work with, but we always have to be willing to be flexible. Anything else, anybody, if nobody else has thoughts on it, then I'm going to actually uh, do a revision and we can always take up the revision at our next meeting as to whether people feel comfortable with it uh, and whether we want to treat it as more than an informal document and treat it as something that the committee itself wants to formally adopt. George, that's right. Yeah, just again, some quick thoughts. I, I appreciate the offer to revise it. Um, I think in what is in the packet, uh, which I believe is Lynn's document, there's just far too much detail. But um, that's maybe something for us to discuss at, at when we come back with a revision for the committee. Um, I wouldn't be too worried about, I mean, it's a two-year um, schedule that you have in front of you. And I would stick to that. I realize it may not be realistic, but I think that that's, it's aspirational, and we should, we should, we should try to keep to that two-year frame and fit things within that within reason. Um, and I wouldn't worry too much about whether at the end it's going to have to be adjusted. It certainly will have to be adjusted. Um, but I think the basic outlines that you provided in the original draft are excellent. Um, I think the Board of Health, Lynn is direct, that needs to be brought into it, and I assume that's something you'll do um, when you uh, do the revision. But um, I wouldn't really uh, obsess too much about, you know, is this possible? Is this possible? Um, I think we'd work within the two-year window and, and create a, 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 a timeline and then bring it back to us. But uh, um, those are my thoughts. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, the one thing I appreciated also with uh, Lynn uh, did was to go towards key features and focus on the word uh, on the term key features as opposed to bylaw, because I'm not sure that we're going to end up with the bylaw. Uh, but what we're talking about is what do we want is the key features for an RFP, and uh, I thought that that was a very helpful switch. I think getting the uh, giving more thought to much earlier outreach and uh, it, it is also a part of it. So I will work on that. And uh, I think it's pretty much uh, uh, based on taking what Lynn has done and uh, starting from that. Anything else that people have to think about on that? Because otherwise, uh, I don't know if we have anything else we want to talk about today day on the subject. Uh, Jennifer? No, I just wanted to thank Lynn because I do think the earlier we do the outreach, the, the, the better. So I'm glad we're starting that sooner. And Paul, I assume since you haven't raised your hand, you have nothing you're suggesting right now. Uh, Athena, please put me back in the audience. Thank you. So the next topic then on the agenda, which we haven't had a chance to talk about in any detail because we've been so focused on this, is the proposed Transportation and Parking Commission that uh, has been referred to us with the request that we report back. Uh, I think October 23rd is the date we were requested to report back to the council on. This is a pretty complicated issue and um, one that I, I think that we need to take very seriously. Uh, also, as an individual counselor, I want to thank you, Paul, for all of your thought that you have put in, into this and work that you've done with it. Um, well, I've uh, identified a few things that I want to think about, um, I think, it, it, uh, the way that you presented it in the memorandum really helped me think through what 
those topics are because I have not been, uh, and again, speaking only as one individual counselor now, I've really been happy with a lot of things that have been uh, happening and how we proceed. It seems right, uh, that we really do need an improvement in the system that we have and a better division of um, where the council needs to spend its time and where the council doesn't need to spend its time. Maybe I've been through the select board and the uh, council in one too many poll hearings. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Paul? Yeah, I just want to, uh, no, I appreciate you. This is a big topic, you're right, Andy, and I think it's something to have a conversation about and engage with this. I do want to recognize that you you talked about the organization. That really was uh, Athena's hand at helping to organize it in a coherent way that aligned with the current council's policies and helped have those two documents, the council's policy on delegation of authority with this concept, um, have, be in conversation with each other. So she did a lot of work um, pulling those two things together in a really, in a really strong way. So, um, but I think the, the goal of it, the general goal, I think you identified is that um, it, the, to facilitate many of the initiatives, you know, many of the, um, decision-making processes to make them more efficient, to have the people at the table who should be at the table, to make it more transparent and accessible to the public and get to de decisions, and to relieve us some of the, the minor, smaller decisions or more um, heavily discussed uh, um, items from the council's agenda, leaving the big topics to the council's, you know, the big decisions, um, changing road directions and things like that. So, um, so I think that that's, that was the goal of this. And I think it's a worthy conversation to have. George, uh, you and I had had a conversation, which, uh, by the way, Guilford is back in the uh, audience section. Uh, I don't know if he wants to come part of this too, which uh, we could bring him into the meeting if he wants. Uh, George, you had given some thought and you and I had a conversation about um, what you thought were some of the things that we needed to talk about. I wanted to see if you had anything you wanted to share at this point. You know, first of all, just um, I really support this. I think this is the right way to go. Um, I, I like what we have in front of us. I realize that may not be true of all my colleagues, but um, I think this is this makes sense for many of the reasons that Paul has stated. Um, I'm just focusing my mind on what what TSO needs to do going forward. I kind of at hope before the meeting is over, we'll go back to the previous topic. I apologize. I'm back. We got power back. Um, but uh, in the in the meantime, I obviously I was way out of this conversation, but uh, of the previous one. But for this one, um, I think the committee needs to figure out how we want to proceed. Um, uh, one way you could do this is to have a presentation, um, and then and with with it sort of in an, in a structured way, um, as opposed to just us uh, at the next meeting or a future meeting uh, saying, "Okay, you you've seen what's in the packet. What do you think?" Um, one way you could proceed is to have someone uh, from the committee um, or whatever, but have somebody make a presentation on this and go through the specifics and lay out some of the uh, uh, the questions and, and issues that need to be addressed, sort of give it some shape and then see what the committee thinks and, and how they want to proceed. Uh, I'm worried about us just kind of uh, discussing this um, and we all kind of just talk, 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 talk. Um, Purpose is certainly a topic I think that we should talk about, re reiterating some of the things that Paul has said and discussing to what degree we as a committee could agree with these these goals. Of uh, Some of them I think we do agree with, some we may not, um, but we need to be clear on what the purpose of this is, and so we should have a discussion about that. Uh, the composition of the commission, uh, the scope of the commission, um, are, are a couple of topics. Uh, realize this is more than just about um, road pavement. Um, it, it it involves um, you know bike and pedestrian safety, sidewalks, speeding. I mean, there are a whole host of things. So part of it also is sort of to lay out uh, the scope 
and see if everyone's uh, what they want to keep in and what they want to take out amongst the committee. Um, so the issue of scope, uh, who should be on the commission, the purpose of this. Um, what else did I have here? Um, issue of expertise. Um, anyway, the, these are some topics and you all may have some others as well, but I think that, that something like this should be presented uh, moving through these topics one by one um, and then have the members of the committee then respond with questions, comments, et cetera. Um, and eventually we could reach a point where we are agreed as to what we think this should look like um, as opposed to just a free for all. That's my main concern today is that we can agree on a way to move forward. Yeah, I agree with um, what George just outlined and suggested. So um, on a more micro level, maybe this could be part of the uh, presentation. So I just from, wanted more clarity on when we have this commission. So the issue like the, the parking regulations on Lincoln Sunset and Elm, how that would work through the commission and my con concern. And like now we have a uh, some parking, well, really traffic issues on Little McClellan Street, that would that be too small for the commission? Like, how would that get addressed with a commission? You know, something that's that neighborhood and street specific. So that's my concern that that, that just wouldn't be something they might take up or they'd want to take it up and as a townwide issue when it's when something's very specific to a street or neighborhood. Um, and then yeah, so that's mine. I have some, you know, general um, suggestions or feelings about the composition of the commission and then like a parking structure. Is that, if we do a downtown parking structure, is that some, I would not want to see that within the commission's purview. So if that could be part of the discussion and presentation. Hey, um, Paul? So Andy, are you looking to just gather the questions today or do you want to have, are you looking to have the conversation? These are all really important questions. I think what we need, what I was thinking about doing and I was going to propose, maybe this is a good, you've given me a good trigger to do it. I was hoping that we could get some preliminary thoughts about the topics that we need to look at as a committee, not actually um, do the analysis or start talking about them today, but start collecting and then send a memo or report to the council because we said report by October 23rd. We can report a lot earlier with our first report. And that first report could simply say, we've identified these issues that we intend to look at, but we know that this really belongs to the council ultimately. Therefore, we want to make sure that we are considering issues that are important to you. If you have any issues that you would like us to consider, please send them to the committee by whatever date we choose. And uh, make sure so that we don't get um, into an unfortunate situation of uh, having thought we had addressed all of the issues and then council and there's a list of other issues that count a counselor or counselors wish to that we had talked about and frustrate the process i'd like to see that we can get a process that gets us to a to a point where the uh, council and can then act on it mm -hmm. so maybe the way to approach it is Assuming that the, I don't, it doesn't sound like you want to debate whether it's a good idea or not. The assumption is let's assume it's a good idea. And like topic one is membership. Let's talk about membership. You know, topic two is um, the sort of charge itself. What's included in the charge? And part of that conversation is like, help me understand would like what Jennifer is saying, would this be included in, ta in, the, in the new committee or not? And if not, where does it live? You know, in terms of neighborhood issues, um, as a traffic issue, whatever. So I think, um, and it, we can actually just work from the charge because I think that's one of the one of the things the council requires is you put together 
an actual charge. And I think that's that's a good framing document that you start to have that you start to react to the charge in in re reference to the council's policy. So I think the next time you put this on your agenda, we can actually structure what are the options, um, what other options did we did we not think about, um, and sort of go through it line by line almost. Yeah, I mean, there's one other that I think is obvious and, and sort of implied in the charge, but I think needs more clarification. And that is, uh, what are the issues that uh, the commission is going to just make a decision on? And what are the issues that the council wants to reserve for itself? And on those, are we looking, and I think the answer to me is obviously going to be yes, but maybe, maybe disagreement on those issues where the council is going to act, do we want a commission recommendation? Um, and uh, so those are, in the, in the the other one is, I think, already been referenced, which is composition. That chart was very helpful, and I appreciated it, but uh, it raises very clearly a lot of um, uh, communities, municipalities that have commissions, have counselors as members. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we need to talk about mm -hmm. that issue. Uh, and then the other thing I had thought about, and this gets into a more nitty gritty practical stage, is uh, speed limits. And uh, the, uh, you know, as, as Guilford has previously advised, um, the state process for establishing speed limits and the engineering studies that are required in order to establish a speed limit. Uh, can require uh, a significant process of needing an engineering study, such as we actually had to get for uh, Henry Street uh, for that particular issue. And uh, so it's, you know, making a decision to uh, deal with speed limits is an extraordinarily complex problem as we've learned and how that fits into this process. Um, Councilor Ryan. So I like Paul's suggestion of using the uh, the committee charge as a, basically as a um, guide, as a, a way of structuring this discussion. Um, I think that makes sense and the, and the key elements are there um composition purpose um and then the specifics of what goes in what doesn't the scope um i just think that when it does happen and um someone there should be an individual person i think the chair could be anybody uh who just wants to sort of guide the discussion um so that we move systematically and there's some sense of an overview um and uh but I think that using this as the framing document makes sense. Um, I guess today the question is, does anyone have any strong feelings like this is a bad idea? Or do, I mean, Jennifer's raised some concerns. That's excellent. And maybe there's some others that should come up now. Um, reaching out to the council and getting their initial input would be valuable uh, as we start this process. And maybe also that could apply to members of the committee. Maybe right now people are still digesting this and still thinking about it. But um, I think initially today, the thought would be, is there anyone who doesn't want to proceed with this? Um, is there anyone who thinks this is really a bad idea um, or it should be delayed? Um, is there anyone who has any thoughts about the process, how they'd like to see the process proceed? Um, as I said already, I'm worried about it just becoming a free-for-all discussion. I'd like it to be fairly clearly structured. Um, I'd like it to start as soon as possible. Um, and having said that, I'm uh, reminding the chair and announcing to my colleagues that I won't be present at the next two meetings. So that's that's just, I'm a fortunate, but that's what's going to happen. So for me, but you're perfectly all capable of carrying this ball. Um, but this is my thought about how I think that it should, the game should be played. Councilor Lord. 
Um, thank you. Being fairly new to TSO, I don't know yet enough, but I'm wondering if there is a difference to our constituents and to the, the public of having us, an elected board, where they have a choice in who's on it, make these decisions and have these discussions versus an appointed board where they wouldn't have any um, input. Again, I'm just putting that out there. I'm going to go try to do some research and find out if there would be a difference to them and if it would really impact them. But that's the first thing that I think of. Otherwise, I think it's a great idea, but I'm like, would it be okay with them if the control is taken out of their hands? At, you know, okay, thank you. that's it. Yeah, actually, I'm glad you mentioned that uh, because um, in the when I said that I wanted to give thought to what issues that the council wants to reserve for itself and might want uh, commission recommendations to the council and what decisions we want to turn over to the commission, I think that you and I were probably thinking along similar lines. You're, you're talking about accountability to elected officials and that's a helpful frame to what I was, but I think we were thinking in similar lines. Uh, Councilor Ryan, you want to uh, let Jennifer go next? Or? I just wanted to echo that thought. Um, I think Alizan is something important. It's on my list. I actually skipped it. Um, I called it the problem of communication and process transparency, but essentially, yeah, constituents are often in the dark as to what's going on, or they're frustrated by the process. They don't know who to go to, who to talk to, and their natural, uh, we'd like to think their natural impulse would be to reach out to their elected representatives. Um, I'm not sure they always do that, but that. But Al's question is, well, then how would this kind of change impact that? Would it be better or worse? Um, would, it, would it improve this? Would it make it better or would it make it worse? And I think that's also something we need to discuss. Um, what would be the impact on constituents and on the relationship they have with their elected officials? I think it's good. I think it should be added to the list of topics. Yes. Jennifer. Sorry, Jennifer. No, that's great. No, I totally agree. And when the town manager initially brought this to the council, the first time we brought it last year, you know, I was one of the counselors that was concerned that the council was delegating too much of its authority to an appointed body. So I totally share that concern. And that's why in I found it really interesting looking at the compositions of the different transportation commissions in other municipalities where Springfield, it's all residents. There's no counselors or town staff, if I read it correctly. And then in others, there were some of the others had one counselor, some had two. I, I favor having counselors, um, you know, as well as resident, you know, counselors on this commission, because I do think there should be a direct link from the residents to their to the officials they have chosen to represent them. But I, that's an excellent point that I think um, we we all share. So I, I, I appreciate you bringing that up. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I agree with what it was you know, good that Council Lord, Lord brought that up because it's a fundamental decision. The charter reserves these decisions to the council. The question is, does the council want to delegate it? So it's a big decision for the council and it's totally within the bounds of the council to decide yes, no, some of it, not all, whatever it chooses to do. Um, and I think that um, we want to reflect on what the goals are and that's transparency, efficiency. I think there's, a, I think we've already heard enough that there's frustration on multiple levels um, from constituents, people who want to do things, and also from counselors and staff that it's the decision making process isn't really as clear cut. And this, the goal of this is to make it more clear cut for folks um, and also to make it a more efficient decision making. These decisions aren't easy. That's why it takes so much time, you know, especially when you're talking about. Uh, limits of budget and um, speed humps and all the different things that come in because there's just a lot of things to consider for the council and you need somebody with a town-wide view because you have local you know people want things in front of their house and then you also have the bigger needs the larger needs of the transportation system so um, I think it is a real fundamental decision by the council um, it's a big one so I think you should take you know make sure you do your homework and take your time to do it 
I think that uh, Jennifer was, some, it was alluding to something um, when she was bringing up the question of parking on a particular street and uh -huh. how decisions get made. I think we <clears throat> really may need to take a little bit of time to think about all the different ways that people now uh, try and get their complaints before a decision-making body um, and uh, how and are they feeling like they have no way of uh, conveying their concerns or that if they convey their concerns, they're not being heard? Because a lot of times the biggest problem with government is that you file your complaint and uh, you never have acknowledgement that anybody actually heard you or you feel you haven't been heard. And uh, on, the, on the other hand, it isn't always a question of being heard. It may be the budget question that Paul was alluding to. That she, it's a good idea, but uh, that sidewalk installation uh, is a lot more complicated. Uh, you know, we we keep hearing uh, people talking about uh, the uh, uh, East Pleasant Street sidewalk desire. Um, but I've always had a suspicion that uh, that's a budget question that may be frustrating uh, a process or that needs, it just doesn't get communicated, but I don't know. Uh, Paul, any follow up on that or I'll call it yes. Jennifer? Yes, no, I think um, one of the points is that the the reason it's a good time to do it is that it's an experienced council. The council's been in operation long enough to have some real life examples. So you can say, well, how would we, how would it address this issue, this request for a sidewalk on East Pleasant Street? How would it have addressed parking on Lincoln Ave? How would it address the um, traffic calming at Cushman? We have real life examples that we can sort of play through and say, well, where would where would the council really want this to live? Is this a committee you'd want to make that decision, or would you want to reserve it for the council? So I think the fact that we have a a, a litany or a, a list of um, tangible project projects that you can think about, I think is is be very beneficial. That's why I think it's important for this council to have this conversation. Okay, Jennifer. Yeah, and I guess if in a presentation or a discussion we have <clears throat> to get really micro in that, I think the way residents feel now, if they mm -hmm. have a parking or traffic or sidewalk concern, they can bring it to their counselor and the counselor will do something with it. That when you have this commission where the members, if they don't live in the district or that, how will they get their concern in front of that body? And will that body be concerned about, you know, again, a particular one street issue. So I think when counselor Lord says, you know, now constituents have the counselor that can bring it forward if the counselor doesn't have a direct connection to the commission, will they feel like their voice can be heard? I guess this is my suggestion of what we do as the next step on this. And that is that, uh, uh, that I work with uh, Vice Chair of the committee, Councillor Ryan, and we, uh, structure a draft of a report of this discussion for uh, a committee report to the council and then uh, send it out to the council. And uh, in that goal of that is to inform them about today's discussion and to invite them to submit their thoughts about things that they want the committee to be looking at as we continue. And uh, then uh, we'll work on a uh, process to move this forward. And uh, that uh, draft report, we will, as I always try and do, circulate it to uh, the entire committee for comment uh, before 
it goes out so that everybody has a chance to uh, indicate that, hey, you missed this point or whatever, or why did you include that? I mean, it's, uh, I think it's always helpful to try and do that. So that seemed like uh, a workable next step. And uh, I'm not, you know, with, with uh, Councillor Ryan's um, expertise and his work that he's done on the issue, uh, and I want to give uh, him credit for uh, the Lincoln Avenue discussion. Uh, uh, one of the things that came out of that that was really helpful was a uh, comprehensive policy on parking issues and how we assess parking, uh, the, those kinds of parking issues. And uh, it, it resulted in a policy to help future TSO committees um, deal with similar requests. And uh, he, uh, George was critical piece uh he, he really did the lion's share of the work on getting that going so i um, hesitate to uh come up with a timeline that doesn't um, give him an opportunity to fully participate which is going to make that october 23 end deadline uh, probably unrealistic but we can uh, put that into the report uh, thoughts on that and uh, anything else back to you george again i'm sorry that that i will not be present i will certainly try to see if there's a way i can um uh, call in or or connect but i at this time the dates are really tough uh, in one case i believe i'm actually on an airplane so that that may be impossible but um i will certainly make every effort to at least participate um what i'm thinking going ahead um, if you use the charge document, you can identify a series of topics, much as we've done today, and you might just decide for each meeting, for the next couple of meetings, we're just going to focus on that particular topic um, and have someone, it could be anybody, could you know present it, and then we talk about it, and we you know see if we have agreement, see where the issues are, um, and then we just work our way through the document in that way. It would probably take um, maybe, what, uh, four or five meetings. I, I hope not much more than that. Again, uh, perhaps Andy and I can think about a timeline here, but that's what I'm envisioning. Rather than taking on an entire meeting dealing with this, you might break it up into pieces because uh -huh. there's going to be other things. Obviously, we're going to have to do. Paul will have appointments. Uh, I'm sure there'll be other stuff. Guilford will probably have some project that we, you know, so we have our regular business, but you could take this um, and break it into pieces and then uh, move through it that way. At the same time, we're asking for input from our colleagues on the council. So your report will hopefully start that process. Um, and uh, so Andy and I can maybe think about a, a map forward that we can share with you all and see if you like it. But I would say take it in bite-sized pieces because um, we're also dealing with uh, the other with uh, the other issue uh, that I want to Waste taller. Yeah, that, that thing uh, <laughs> uh, that I want to come back to before we leave today. Um, but that's my suggestion is make it pieces and use the the document as our as our guide. Okay. Anything else that people want to say right now about the uh how we're proceeding with the transportation and parking commission proposal? So uh I'll talk to uh, George after the meeting will see uh, which one of us is going to take take on doing a draft to report we'll get it to the committee so that and then get it back to the council and move forward as we discussed anything else on that you did you say something you wanted to come back to on the uh, waste hauler discussion well because of the constant communication problem here and the loss of power um i kind of fell out of the conversation a bit um and when i came back it was reaching its a conclusion I, I just guess i want a sense of what what our next steps as a committee with waste hauler um if you could just make that clear to me um uh what what we're going to be doing uh over you know over the next couple of weeks and months um, what's, you know, I'm not, maybe we can't talk about months, but at least what's our next steps with waste dollar? What are we doing as a committee um, uh, about this? 
Uh, are we going to assign certain topics for people to look into? Or are we just going to, I think there's a lot of work needs to be done and we need to come to some agreement, I think, amongst the, all of us as to, you know, how much we're willing to take on and what we're going to take on. Um, so, I'm, yeah, what's next steps with Waste Hall for us, the committee? Um, I think that uh, outreach uh, is one identification, uh, making sure that we are getting kind of the key points that we want to have in an RFP. Uh, and ha the key features for the for an RFP and for the for the process. Those are the uh, things that I think, and just uh, um, as Paul is able to report back to us on uh, what he's what his thoughts are and how we can move forward on getting um, a consultant and what the consultant's role should be as a discussion. I think I probably have to have a little bit directly with him. And uh, those are where kind of the immediate steps strike me. Okay. Anybody else have something to add? Um, as far as you, uh, Andy, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm concerned. I, uh, I know we. I just uh, there's just a lot that needs to be get started. I think um, you mentioned the contract language that we have from Long Meadow. So maybe one concrete action step is that some of us, maybe all of us, will take a very close look at that, or at least read some of it. Um, we'll look at a sort of model, um, you know, contract. Um, you know, uh, I have yeah, a host of issues that, that I'm thinking about. I guess part of it is how much are we going to do as a committee uh, in preparation for eventually the assumed hiring of a consultant to, uh, to draft an RFP? Um, how much can we do at our end to facilitate that to the highest degree possible so when they come on board, um, they have a very uh, much, they have as much information as we can possibly give them. Are we expecting them to do all the work and we just sit back and then look at what they create? Uh, yeah, Paul has some thoughts here. Yeah, I think the, the RFP for the consultant is the next task, right? That's the thing we want to get out. And I think that I'm looking at this time schedule that um, was in the packet and it's pretty aggressive. Um, and it's, it says it wants to have the RFP out this month which were which means basically two weeks um now it you know we'll have to decide if that's that's a possibility but there's before you do the rfp you need to know some basic question you know what's being included i think we have a sense of that but i think the next step is for the the committee to review the rfp for the consultant and see if, if it's if it's achieving what you want to achieve And whether it includes community outreach or not, that was the other piece of it. George, when you were talking about contracts, you're talking about contracts with consultants or contracts ultimately with haulers. I was thinking about haulers because that's what you had focused on. We have a number of contracts of haulers. I want to just point out that yeah. Yeah. Uh, Guilford put together for us that are in yeah. a prior packet and uh, for that came from the RFI process and the follow-up to the RFI process. And uh, so that there are a number of contracts to look at. We don't have a number of, we don't have a lot of RFPs to look at, uh, which is, uh, except now we have Long Meadow. Uh, and uh, the uh, well, what we've given Paul through this motion is a sort of broad picture of what uh, this committee at the moment, and hopefully most of our colleagues, since they voted uh, unanimously in support of it, was sort of what the broad picture of things, uh, what we're, we're trying to get to. But there are a host of specifics that that um, we haven't really focused in on. 
um, some of which clearly will require some uh, consultancy help, but some of which it seems are really up to us to uh, make some determinations. There's also information that perhaps we could gather um, in the in the interim. Um, we're talking. Uh, my understanding of the timeline is that a consult would not actually uh, be uh, on board until January. Uh, it's, it, I'm, maybe I'm misreading it, or um, uh, I've got two versions of a draft, uh, two timelines too. So I don't. Again, <laughs> this committee seems to like to have two things at once, but uh, <laughs> we have two timelines. We have two bylaws. Uh, uh, I'm going with the original uh, plan because uh, we haven't really discussed the uh, the one that's in the uh, the packet uh, in any detail. It's just there for us to look at. Um, the one that you and, and we all kind of agreed on is the is the first one, which is the one I'm following. So anyway, that it seems like a consultant won't really actually be on board until January. Is that um, something? And, and so, what do we do between now and then? I, I don't want us sitting on our hands. Um, uh, but I, that's me speaking. I don't know what the rest of you all think. And then I don't know, what, what does it mean for us not to be sitting on our hands? What are we supposed to be doing? We don't want to just be doing stuff for the sake of doing stuff. Um, so that's what I'm concerned about. And I'm not sure we're going to resolve it this morning, but. Um, Jennifer? Yeah, I guess for, <clears throat> I was looking at the, that I guess the amended with a lot of, read <laughs> the timeline that was in our packet, which says that the draft bylaw wouldn't actually, not the draft, that the RFP would not be issued. I guess that I was reading it, but I might've misread it. Wasn't gonna go out until April with responses back by May of 2025. I think that was for the actual RFP for services, not the, so if we're gonna to put together an RFP for actual waste hauling services, that's right. a major that's a major initiative that we've been saying is the town does not have staff to do that. So you need to hire someone to do that. Right. So the so consultant that, will come on, right. And we'll do that. And so, you know, yeah, so it, 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 that will, that's a pretty extensive uh, engagement and putting together that whole document. It's, you know, we, I mean, you can take what Longmeadow did and dust it off and say, we just want to do the exact same thing. Um, but I think that's not likely what the what the town is going to want to do. So you're going to have to engage a consultant to build that RFP together and then issue it and analyze the bids and all that kind of stuff. So do you think it's realistic the RFP could go out in April? <clears throat> Uh, that's, uh, that's what I, I'm just looking at this timeline for the first time. So, okay, so it, 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 it's, it's, I think it's ambitious, but I think that's, that's the, I mean, what George is saying is like, let's hold on to it, even if it is ambitious and see, let's sort of continue to press on the timeline of this. Yeah. Um, I, I think that the thing, which is why I said something earlier, uh, which is, is the real, is it realistic to think that we could have a decision by July 1st to give a one year notice to a new contractor based on the RFI one year statement that was there? Or is uh, that uh, an unrealistic date? And you know, I, we need some good advice on that. Um, but the other thing I want to, I, I don't know if I don't George. I think it's a decision that made today, but we need some good advice on it. So, George, I don't know if you were, had lost power, if you were off and we were discussing one thing, well, all the counselors could do almost starting as soon as they can is have district meetings, either a district meeting specifically to discuss waste taller or as an item on their agenda. So we, the community outreach could begin hopefully right away. I know that Lynn had raised the question at one point, and I think yeah. Paula has mentioned it too, about uh, whether a consultant helping with outreach is an important part of the process, knowing that uh, other communities that have engaged in a process of this extensive change to something like the waste hauler system has not been easy. It's field it took... Um, <laughs> to say years for them to get to the end result of getting a major change in the system for trash 
Oh, so, yeah. I, yeah, I guess when I look, I'm sorry, but I look at this, I, I, you know, there are just a whole host of things that it seems like we as a committee should be thinking about. And, and again, we can't do this all in one meeting or even as if it's going to take some time. But if we don't start uh, planning about it and deciding we want to actually dig into some of these things, we're just going to be waiting to see what what happens. And I think that's that's kind of been a problem uh, somewhat in, in the past here. Um, so, for instance, somebody or some we should be looking at at sample contracts, um, and and maybe the, we'll start with Long Meadow. Um, we should be we should be thinking about what what does it what do we want for a pay as you throw what is it a pay as you throw fee structure? What are, what are some models? Um, you know, what's what what are we thinking about in terms of the role of the transfer station? Um, yes, a consultant is going to help us a great deal on that, but I think we need to do some really hard thinking and some gathering together of uh, stuff for on that issue. Um, the phasing in, um, how's that going to work? Um, and I think that the, the report, and I mean, I'm just looking at the eight elements on, on the thing that we've all agreed to as a council, and there seem to be some key pieces in there that we as a committee have got to get a bit more information and we have to do some more hard thinking about and some work, I'm afraid. Uh, otherwise, this is going to continue to just... So I guess it's, again, the question, what can we do as a committee to move this along? Um, and uh, I'm, I start with this motion that we passed and some of the pieces in it. And um, what are people willing to dig into um, or not? And what do they think we, we, we need to know more about before a, a consultant is hired? Um, I just don't think we can wait until a consultant is hired to start thinking about, you know, uh, the pay should throw fee structure, contract language, um, you know, uh, transfer station role. It's not that we're going to decide these things, but we've at least gotten some sense of, of what's involved, what the issues are, and maybe some information and, and, and material that can be useful um, and some gu give some guidance to a consultant as to where we're going. Um, because that's what they're going to look for as soon as they come in the door. They're going to say, OK, well, what do you guys want? What What is it that you want? Um, and if we just look at them and say, well, we want you to just hand them this motion and say, we want you to do this. That that's not going to work. But the contract language, I mean, contract is not something that we're going to develop it. Uh, okay. Contract and is I'm something that we, re we require staff to do. OK. So, so what about the pay as you throw fee structure? What about uh, you know? Do we want do we want curbside composting that's mandated? Yeah, we we, we need to get input on that. Uh, but the okay. RFP is going to tell us some on that too. Okay. Uh, if you look back at the at the answers to questions that we right. uh, for the council last week that we put together and sent out, uh, it. Uh, you know, the, the options for pay as you throw, I think that we pretty well know what they are. We And we learned them from, you know, just read the DEP material. Uh, you can have uh, one size of container. You can, the, and people pay extra for a second size. And that may be what some vendors want. Um, you could offer, if if a vendor would agree to it, um, to have people choose the size of container and paid by the size of the container. Um, what Longmeadow does uh, is uh, um, they have a size of a container that they provide to everybody. Everybody gets the same size. And then they um, sell bags um, that people can put next to their container. And Casella for them act goes through and will stop and pick up the bag, the bag price, um, you know, has to um, compensate for that extra service um, and is what how they implement pay as you throw. Um, there's some that used to exist that just aren't realistic anymore. We already know from the RFI, which is do it all with bags. Um, but I, you know, I think some of this is what well, maybe maybe what I'm thinking is is something along the lines of of what we just uh, discussed with the previous topic, which is breaking some of this into smaller pieces and then putting part of a meeting uh, uh, focused on that particular topic, um, and in the purpose of generating eventually some kind of written piece, something written 
that would be guidance to to certainly to to a, a consultant and might also help us in terms of our outreach. But it's just things we need to talk about and get get clarity on. I think I think in order to for us to move forward with this. Um, so uh, you mentioned a whole bunch of possibilities for pay as you throw. Uh, well, we need to sort of lay them out and 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 I don't know. I just I feel like this is and also with the role of the transfer station. Um, uh, the phasing aspect. I mean, there are just like four or five topics here that I think we need uh, as a committee to 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 dig into more um, that we haven't done. We just haven't done it. Um, and but I may be alone in this. Maybe people don't feel that way. So I just that's my concern. Oh, yeah. So I think that's the role of the consultant that we're hiring. We're hiring a consultant to help the council make the, the, what we have been saying, there is not staff time or support to help you make your decision on these major discussions mm -hmm. with, with what you want to purchase. What the, what the bigger RFP does is what you want to purchase from a, from a one contractor to provide to the town. And, and there's a bevy of questions that you've been talking about all morning sort of in different circles. Right. So I think what you, the consultant is a staff person who will support you and say, here's your next set of questions that you have to answer. Do you want to keep the transfer station open or not? Do you, you know, and, and here's how other towns do it. Here's, here's some advice on it. You make the decision. So you, it's, you know, I think it's too much for the committee, honestly, for the, unless there's somebody who's saying, I'm going to devote my next three months of my life to doing this. I don't think anybody's stepping up to say that. I think that's why you, and it's a worthwhile investment in a consultant to come in and do that. We don't have staff time to do that. Normally that's what town staff would do, but this is not something that we've ever budgeted for in our budget or anything like that. So that's why we will be coming to you, asking you for funding to hire someone who will be, and you know, Guilford's already been in touch with some folks to say, is this something you could help our town with? So um, there'll be some, somebody who comes in and they will help structure it for us, much like like we're doing the design review standards or the housing production plan or all those things. We bring people in and they help structure it for the decision makers. So I think that's what that's, I, I feel your frustration, George, but I think um, the, there is going to be a process and it's, you know, if it's timely, we get to April with an actual RFP with decisions having been made by the council. And I think some of these things will be TSO decisions and then it'll, it'll elevate to the council ultimately. So I guess, Paul, my question then is for you, what can we do as a committee? And maybe you've already answered this and you're just going to remind me, but what can we do as a committee to best uh, further this in, in, for you? Um, uh, is it what what do you want us to be doing, um, if anything, at this point? Uh, so the next thing is to look at the RFP, RFP for the consultant, right? for the consultant. Like, what do you want the consultant to do? And the, one, one of the key questions, do you want them to do are you going to do the outreach or, or do you want the consultant to do outreach when you do a district meeting? Do you need someone there to talk about what, what this is, or is it, does every counselor feel confident in speaking about it? Again, we don't have the staff support to, to provide that. Normally we would have a, someone to do that, but mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so, but then if that gets built into the consultant's contract, that r drives up the price, right? Because meetings are one or $2,000 each. Um, so you just have to decide what we want this consultant to do, or if the counselor, are the counselors going to do the outreach or who's going to be doing this outreach business? If you feel yeah, like that's yeah, important. Yeah. I mean, so Paul, when in, in what I've said already, you, um, I mean, I've said outreach really comes much later. Um, you feel like perhaps like many others that somehow it has to come sooner. But my point has been over and over again, you can't do outreach on a program that doesn't exist. Um, the only thing that exists is this motion and some broad, you know, sense of where we're headed. But the specifics are not there, and they're not going to be there for quite some time. So I don't see how. We, yeah, maybe your thought is, but still, the RFP should have, if we want it, they should have language about they're going to have to do outreach at some point. I so, don't see. So, do yeah, so there's the two different approaches. One is to do outreach early and say, "What would you like to see?" Right. There's that's version one. Version two is to say, "We're going to put together a plan." And then come to you and say, "Here's what we here's what we think we're going to do. What do you think?" Um, and so there's just two different approaches. One is to solicit information before you've developed a plan. The other is develop the plan and then get reaction to it. Um, it's and the council has to decide how it would like to move forward on those those two things. I think you're like George. You're you're more likely to say, "Let's make a decision where the educated elected yeah, officials and work, let's yeah. let's before we do the RFP before we go out to bid." Let's check with our constituents. Make sure that we're in we're in sync with them. Jennifer, 
I mean, we can do both. I know it, I, one of the first council mm -hmm. meetings, Dorothy, Pam, when we were, and I had, we invited a representative from Zero Waste Amherst just to talk about the topic. So it could still, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's something the council agrees to do outreach individually, it's something each councilor could include in their district meeting agenda. I don't disagree, but the danger is that people will say things that are completely, you know, they're just wrong or they're just, they they they, they say, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. In fact, we haven't agreed to anything of the sort. Right. Um, and and there is a written document that everyone has and on the council that can, and that's all it is. That's it. And anything else that people add to it or, 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 or interpret it is, is just there. And, you know, I, so that's what I'm worried about is that, you know, I think we should do outreach. People should talk, but. Please follow the I mean, script. At least we could get a sense from our constituents of how they. Yeah. What? Right. Yeah. I mean, some people may say, "I don't want to be, you yeah. know, have to compost." I don't. That you know, that's just not mm -hmm. something I'm willing to do. Right. Yeah, I guess uh, I, I'm a little bit uncertain as to where your frustration is coming from because pick pay as you throw uses one of the two examples you gave, and it's a major element is the question, do we do pay as you throw? We, I think we decided already that that's a key element. Right. That, but... That's what the council voted. And the options of how you do pay as you throw, I think that we know from DEP and how we're going to get from the decision of what those various ways of doing uh, pay as you throw to which one is the right one for us it's partly a matter of knowing what the financial piece is that comes in with that. And that's where I think we need to just, you know, ask the consultant uh, what, how, what, what can we do to okay. help narrow the, the options or can the options be put out through the RFP. I think that we just, I'm not sure what else we can do right now. Uh, as far as uh, compost uh, collection, I mean, the biggest issue out there is, uh, you know, whether uh, it's going to be offered as an option or whether it's going to be something that is assumed that everybody is doing. Uh, and, uh, you know, that, and again, we don't have the answer to that at the moment. You know, I don't, you know, that, that's it's a difficult one, but I don't know that it's that complicated. So what I'm hearing, if I may, is just that that essentially the, the consultant is really going to be important and is going to be assisting us in, in shaping this. And I just need to be patient, um, which I'm not. And um, uh, fine. I'll try to be more patient. Well, your vacation will help you. No, it won't. It won't. I, it doesn't. I'm this way no matter what. Um, so I'm sorry. It's just you're stuck with the way I am. But uh, uh, I just, yeah. But this this is good. I appreciate your patience with me tonight. Uh, Jennifer had to deal with me at the council meeting on Monday night. Um, I, I, I can certainly appreciate, you know, when a council works on something for two years and they, they've, you know, and they've had it before my committee uh, and then they come to the council meeting and then I go... <laughs> But I, it's helpful to me to really, is the big picture, just trying to sit back and think, okay, what is this thing actually going to do? Um, so it, it, but it's hard when it's your, you've been working on something for so long, but um, that's just the way I work. I'm sorry. Is there anything else we want to talk about in this or because otherwise so we could get on to approval of the minutes that were there and uh, uh, to see if there's any uh, where we are with next meetings and adjourn. Uh, there was uh, minutes of our previous meeting that were in the packet. Uh, and uh, that was the meeting of August 29, 2024. Does everybody had a chance to look at it? And if uh, so, is there a motion? Um, I can move to that we approve the minutes of August uh, 29, 2024. Motion is any second? Second from Jennifer. Uh, 
So let's proceed to a vote. Uh, Council Lord. Aye. Uh, Council Ryan. Aye. Uh, Jennifer. Yes. Tommy, I mean, yes. So it's four to zero with one member absent. Those minutes have been approved. Um, I think that we uh, have the next meeting that's uh, on our schedule is uh, two weeks from now. And uh, we know that uh, Councillor Ryan will be away at that point and is unavailable. Uh, the uh, agenda would be <clears throat> any uh, to pick up on the discussion we just had about waste hauler, if there is anything that we can move, do to assist with moving along the um, quest, question that uh, of the RF, the request for consultant services, and I'll talk with Paul about that um, and see if we can if, if we can have that discussion. If it's helpful to have that on the agenda in a couple of weeks, and uh, <clears throat> the other thing that's obvious is the uh, next steps with the transportation parking commission. Are there any other issues that people would like to request on that agenda? If there are any, please send them along. Athena. Um, I think we will have, Angela was checking to see if the planning board had made a recommendation for their representative to CPAC. If they have, then uh, hopefully the town manager will have an appointment memo for you at the next meeting. And then the, I'm, I'm not sure if you touched on this, um, but I was back and forth between other things, um, but the town manager will have an appropriation request for the consultant services at some point. Um, that, and that will go through from the council to the finance committee for approval. So that's going to be an important step for the council um, before a consultant is hired. Could I you may ask a question about that, Athena? Um, the request for appropriation would not come to TSO, though, right? It would go to the council, and uh, it would be a council decision. Um, it's it's more the nature of the language, which is something Andy's going to be talking to Paul about. So as far as TSO is concerned. Yeah. So the, so we'll do, um, not, to be an agenda. Yeah. not, not for TSO, It'll, the no. appropriation request will go to the council and then finance committee will need to review and report on it. We have to do um, a public forum on it before there's approval and so on. So mm -hmm. I think that was part of the thinking behind the, mm -hmm. the slower, set of dates in that timeline that Lynn had shared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is the assumption that the uh, request was to coincide with when uh, free cash, cash transfers are made at the point after free cash is certified? Right, Paul's nodding. Last time I spoke with Holly, she said that we hope that that happens in October, but it is certified when it's certified. Um, That's so the, the, when I put the schedule initially together, that was the assumption I was making. Jennifer? Um, so the appropriation for the consultant, would it be in two parts? Like if the um, an amount, if the consultant is just going to work on the RFP for, versus the RFP and do outreach? Because there'll be two very different amounts, I would imagine, depending on the scope of what the consultant would be asked to do. I think that's what we were going to, when I was mentioning next meeting, if we do anything on waste hauler, it's probably just going to be focusing on that scope issue mm -hmm. if, it was, if it's helpful to have that discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I, it would be because I think that's, I mean, with you know, certainly you know, input from the town manager, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because what we request that council will have different We'll have a different response <laughs> if it's a smaller amount versus a larger amount. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Anything else? Um, there's one additional item I may add to the packet of this meeting, and I'll let you know that I did. And that is a uh, uh, 
piece it's from DEP website on the process that we're uh, getting in and I have looked at it uh, is in if it seems helpful I'm uh, looking at it again I think I might be inclined to put it in it mm -hmm. just gives you some thinking about um, all that we're trying to do and how they've thought through this thing they actually had a consultant that developed it for DEP. Uh, but since it comes from a, uh, you know, comes from a state agency, I'm not particularly concerned about just putting it in. Uh, so with that, I think a motion to adjourn would be the right thing to do. Second. <laughs> All right, so it's made and seconded. Uh, Council Lord? Aye. Uh, George? Aye. Uh, Jennifer? Yes. And I'm a yes, so it's four to zero. We have voted to adjourn. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye -bye.